Hey everybody, this is Vril. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. So we're pretty far along in our fascist Argentina playthrough and I wanted to switch gears here and do a playthrough as one of the seven major nations in the game. So despite the devastation of the Great War, France has been on the road to recovery thanks to a strong economy. However, the depression has still affected the country and the new German regime has no interest in paying the war reparations stipulated by the Treaty of Versailles. When the treaty was signed, a French marshal famously remarked that it was not peace, but an armistice of 20 years. Those 20 years are now rapidly running out. So our government type is a democratic regime and our leader is Edouard Daladier from the ruling party, Parti Radical. So our elections are coming up in just a few short months in April of 1936. Now our national spirit includes Victors of the Great War, which decreases our recruitable population, while increasing the land doctrine research time by 75%. We get disjointed government, which increases our daily political power cost, and we have a national unity of minus 10%. And finally, we get protected by the Maginot Line, which gives us a max planning bonus of plus 25%, but that planning speed for that bonus is minus 25%. So looking at the political landscape of France at the moment, the Party Radical is at 69% popularity, and the second place party is the Communist Party at 30%. We'll be pushing popularity of this party and changing over to the French Commune as soon as we're able to. So we'll be playing this on the regular difficulty, we'll be playing with Iron Man mode turned on once again, and this time we'll be playing with historical AI focuses turned off. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so getting started, you will notice that our national unity is very, very low. That isn't helped by the disjointed government giving us that minus 10%. And over here on political power, as we discussed, also that disjointed government giving us a minus 0.8. So we only have 1.2 per day for our political power. Leaves us with a few less options than we would otherwise. And our manpower also reduced by the victors of the Great War. And that limited conscription policy will hope to change that as soon as we can. I did go ahead and do a little bit of work on our order of battle, just basically splitting up all of our units into different theaters and just splitting them basically by their type. These garrison guys are basically the equivalent of a garrison infantry unit. Let me just quickly look here. So I did rename these as well. So these German front guys are the infantry the italians i believe they're mountaineers we have a mixture of cavalry and armor and motorized here on the spanish front and that garrison as we discussed so first of all we need to go ahead select a national focus and similar to the generic focus tree i think that was called political effort there we are running the french focus tree, which is a unique tree to France. We're going to run government reform, which gives us that political power of plus 120, similar to that political effort that we did with the generic focus. So we'll get that started. And actually, after we get that done, we'll go down the Ver revise Versailles, support left, and then probably leftist rhetoric. This gi does give us the option to join the comm intern at some point in time. I don't know if I will. We'll see what happens. I don't want to tie myself down to a thought that I make in the first episode, but we'll see what happens. I am planning to probably go into neighboring nations, though. Uh, probably take over the low countries here, maybe Switzerland, eyes on Spain, and best case scenario, probably Italy. And I guess the main focus will be to just survive the possible German invasion. So, selected our national focus. We can go ahead and set some industry or some research. So actually, while we do that, let me, before I forget, go ahead and set our engineering research because we do have three slots there. So we'll do two. It's always best to go after these engineering and industry from the get go. And otherwise, so we do have 1936 infantry already. We already have motorized researched. We do need to research support weapons. We already have recon yeah, that's all, all we have. We do have support equipment already, though. We have a pretty good situation armor-wise. I'll probably move on to the medium tank. 
Don't know if I'll do anything with the heavies. But we'll see. I think going with the medium tanks probably the best way to go. Artillery is pretty good. Already got our Great War artillery. And we'll probably research anti-tank. I would think that'd be a good idea to have. Land doctrines, we already have. Trench warfare, obviously our knowledge of the First World War. So we'll probably go down the Grand Battle Doctrine, but we'll see. Uh, ships, we don't really have anything. We already have Fleet in Being, which gives us our Battleship Battle Cruiser. Heavy Cruiser organization there. Aircraft is also decent as well. We'll probably go down and build some fighters in this one. Always important to get that fighter bonus. Don't have any doctrines for the air, air yet, and that's where we're at. So we already looked at our engineering and industry. So... Okay, we actually didn't select anything. So I was going to go down and get the fighters going. Fighter 1936. All too valuable to have that. We have some civilian factories not being worked on. Let's go ahead, build a couple. We'll also be doing some trading here momentarily. So let's build a couple of these. And what do we have? We need, we need oil. So it'd probably be a good idea to trade with the Soviets. However, I'm going to go ahead and trade with the U.S. They never have any issues with supply. So, I mean, I'm just thinking Soviets because they will, uh, we might join the common turn. Most likely we will, but we'll see. So our factories, we have naval dockyards. So we have submarine one and we have submarine two. I'm not sure why we need both of these. I might go ahead and cancel Production cost, 1,000. This one's a little bit more. I really don't see any reason to be building two of these. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the submarine one. And that will open up some slots for naval stuff here. So since we're probably going to be facing the Germans at some point in time, we'll know they'll have a pretty hefty submarine fleet. I think we'll probably go for destroyers like cruisers. And actually, yeah, so we have a battleship in there as well. It's going to take a little while to build that. Let's prioritize this light cruiser over the battleship. Over on this front, towed artillery. I'm assuming that we're probably the best on all of these already. So it's like I said, we already have these light tanks going, so that's quite good, too. Already traded, so I think everything here is good for the moment, anyway. Go ahead and build just a couple divisions to keep this happy, and we'll go ahead and set this around the Paris region. So I did set, like I said, the order of battle here. Let's just go ahead and set some basic front lines here. I'll set my garrison on the Belgian border, set these German... Benelux guys, just on the German border, we probably could have renamed that. These Italian guys, these are Mountaineers. We'll set them on the Italian border. And these Spanish front guys, these are actually, well, they're not actually here yet, but they are our tanks, cavalry, and are motorized. So if I add these guys to this... It's not going to merge them. Yes, it did actually merge them. That's okay, I suppose, since they're all going to be on the same front anyway. All right, so we know that Spanish Civil War is going to be taking place at some point in time. Let's go ahead and just get things going. So we'll be... we got to get this government reform going, but we'll be pushing towards building up our Communist Party, as we've already discussed. So we'll see if all these guys, yes, they are correctly. So because uh, we've got a lot, I already did this order of battle. I basically, we had, I want to say 74 units around the world. They all are set up into these armies that we're going to be bringing back to the mainland here and setting. So they'll, they'll be coming over time. We've got guys in North Africa. I think we have guys all the way over in French Indochina. And we'll be bringing them back on home at some point in time. 
So I haven't actually set any leaders on these. Let's go ahead. Just, I guess, this one. I can put Charles de Gaulle. He's a panzer leader. Okay. Got a couple panzer, panzer leaders. A trickster. Let's actually put that panzer leader. De Gaulle will go on the... Actually, this guy's even better than him. So... Not sure what that uh, what the actual skill level if they both have Panzer Leader. I guess it's a general uh, bonus. So we'll put him. Not sure if it has ages and whether these guys can die or not either. So don't not want to promote him. But yeah, since these guys have some tanks, we'll put them on there. We'll put a field marshal on this stack of twenty eight. Well, I guess we already did that. Trickster can go on this mountaineer. Alphonse. Okay, that guy was a Panzer Leader too, so there we go. And our garrison. We'll probably mix up that garrison a little bit. I guess we'll put uh, De Gaulle on the garrison even though he's a Panzer Leader. Just for the moment while we figure things out. We still need to do a little bit of that same... It's actually... Well, I guess I can keep the time going, but... Let's go ahead and merge up all of our navy fleets and then sort them out. Basically, this is what I did. We actually, before we merge these, we need to put them all in the same port and we'll have them all go to Bordeaux. We've got quite a few tactical bombers. Naval bombers, which... Not sure, but I've read that they don't have as much use in this initial version, but the fighters are certainly going to be beneficial. Maybe what we'll do is focus on tactical bombers and fighters, unlike the Argentina playthrough where we did close air support and fighters for the most part. We have a ton of convoys. Ton of convoys. So yeah, I'll go ahead and increase our speed a little bit more since we're getting things going. So yeah, nothing to do with our political power. So yeah, as soon as we can, we'll probably be changing some things here. A limited conscription. I suppose we probably don't need to change that until we're actually at war. And any decisions that we can do to get our national unity to go up would probably be very, very beneficial at this point. With 30% unity is a very, very bad thing. Got 102 of our ships. I think that we've got more possibly coming. Maybe I didn't actually select everybody. Let me merge number one. These guys. Thought I had everybody here, but apparently not. Not sure why they had those guys come out to sea. So yeah, other than that, this episode, for the most part, be pretty slow. Like I said, these guys are all the garrison template. can actually just quickly, while we have nothing else to do, look at the templates here. So this is just a 6 infantry and their reserve level for their reinforcements. We have armor, that is just 4 armors. We have armor with mechanized and a recon company. We have cavalry with just four cal cavalry and a recon company. Mountaineers, just, what is this? 12 Mountaineers, and we've got motorized infantry, completely motorized infantry, a support artillery recon company. And we've got the infantry here, which you might think about adding a recon company. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and actually get some of these guys exercising that we can so we can start building some army experience up. So that'll work quite well. Okay, I was gonna say, why are these <laughs> Swiss units in Italy? But they were not. They kind of, you zoom out here and they give you this kind of this summer, summary looking view. So yeah, we have our entire fleet here. Let's merge these guys up. I think it merged. There we go. So... Let's move all of our battleships. Not sure what it would be good to... We actually do have a carrier. I was just looking at that. 
Would it be good to have a carrier escorted by a battleship? I don't think so, but maybe some heavy cruisers. All right, so we're done with our government reform, number one. Probably could split off our submarines into their own fleet as well. So we'll go ahead to the revise of Versailles, which, as you guys might have remembered, we had that... I think it was the Great Victors of the Great War, which decreases our land doctrine research time. Might have been one of the other uh, national things that we had, but we get 2x for the research bonuses. Very, very important, meaning that we have a 75% speed deficit. So we'll get that going. Did have an election in April of 36. So. We'll see what comes up from that. We see in our Argentina playthrough, we did not have any elections whatsoever because we changed over to the we did a fascist coup d'etat before that ever happened. I wonder if there's anybody that's not here yet. I think everybody in Indochina also moved. Got a little, is this ours? Yes, that is ours. And we should have, what, French Guyana over here? I think that's all of our, our colonies. We might have a few islands around here somewhere. Yes, we have the French Caribbean there. Some of that uh, American stuff looks like it's ours, but it's not. Yeah, so we do have non-core population. Actually, that's probably, say, our, like, Morocco, Algerian provinces. State owner. I don't know what that exactly would be. Resistance can grow in non-core population. This is considered... Yeah, okay, there it is. It says non-core state, so this is considered non-core. Good to know. Obviously, that could be a strategy for France. Maybe if you wanted to stay democratic and maybe build up industry similar to like what the Italians kind of want to do in Ethiopia here. Obviously, they're in that war, but they want to build up Ethiopia slightly. The Italians focus on some industry there. That could be good if they lose. Well, for in our, in our case, if we lost the mainland to the Germans, then it'd be good to be able to have some industry elsewhere. But we are certainly not going to be doing that. We'll go right into mechanical computing. Sort of my standard method of research there at the very beginning of these games. It's like our army experience is going up. Is there really much negative for doing this? Having these guys train? I think it was these guys that are training. Yes. I mean, does this actually use up... Let's actually find out where these guys are at, number one. So they'll take some attrition, obviously. So that can cause some, I guess, some loss of supplies and things like that. So workers threaten with strikes. Following the sackings of two workers at a large factory, struggles between workers and factory owners have erupted across the country. Workers backed by the Communist Party have organized and are demanding better conditions such as higher wages and shorter work weeks. This will greatly reduce the output of our factories and is viewed as a victory for the Communist Party. We are invited for negotiations. Do we give in to their demands or stand firm and risk a countrywide strike? We would get factory output national unions minus 10%. I think we'll go ahead, negotiate a deal here, and change in popularity of communist will be 7%. So we'll go ahead and do that since we want that to change to communist. We're up to 37% now. So yeah, we'll get a lot of these flavor events at playing as France with some communist uprisings and party support there in the factories especially. I 
can still go up to the maximum speed since we're not really doing anything otherwise. So we have the... it is May Day now, so the election public demands rearmament. The ongoing war approaching our borders has loomed over the upcoming election with many voters being concerned that France is not prepared for being thrown into a, this conflict or whatever may arise from it. They demand we increase our precautions and ensure that our nation is ready for war. While the majority still support party radical, we may lose to more radical elements if we don't alleviate their apprehensions. So, more national unity, or let's see, change economy law, early mobilization. What would that also do? Factory construction speed. What was the alternative? Is national base unity? We do not want that. So, what was this? It was early mobilization. That's actually economic, isn't it? So. Seems like a good thing to me. Let's go ahead and move this to early mobilization. Alright, well it does look like we're out of time for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this one and end up enjoying the series. We'll be moving towards the communist ideology in the upcoming episode, so I'll see you guys then.